In today's tutorial, we will be going over how to create, edit, and extract data from tables. Before we get started, I would just like to remind our viewers that if you are not happy with the pace of the video in YouTube, you can make the video run faster by using the little gear symbol at the bottom of the page. So, uh, what is a table? Well, a table is a object a bit like an SQL table. It's basically a fancy array in a lot of ways. It's a place where you can store data of different sorts and then efficiently manipulate it. Uh, so particularly, I like to use it when I am mixing data of different types. For example, if I have some dates, if I have uh, some strings, and all of these are living next to some numbers. So to give you uh, an idea, let's say we have a basic um, uh, data table here. I'm using as my example, this is a weight table. So this is just some made up weights that someone might have the date, uh, what their weight was that day in pounds, how many minutes they walked on a particular day, their calorie consumption, and how they felt. So this is the sort of thing that you might find on a dieting website or something like that. So first of, first of all, for uh, our example, we want to load the data in. We can achieve this exactly as we talked about in our previous read and write I.O. tutorial using the read table command. So if I do this, you'll see that data has been successfully loaded into the system. And if I look at the data object, you see that it's a 9 by 5 table, and it has specifically entries for weight, for date, for walking minutes, for calories, for feeling. And especially important, you'll see that the types of them have been correctly set. In earlier versions of MATLAB, I think anything, at least anything before R2016A, uh, the dates will be loaded in as a string. I know that as of 2018a, they're loaded in correctly when the format of them makes sense. So let's uh, go ahead and take a look at exactly what's stored inside here. One thing you can do is take a look at the summary of the data. This just gives you a nice way to actually view what's inside the data uh, table. So we have some objects or some uh, different variables, and you see that indeed we actually had a date time object with a min, a median, and a max given. Likewise, the weights were stored as doubles. So basically, these are basically treated as arrays that are stored inside the table. And then the last object, the feeling, was actually stored as a cell array of strings. So this is really useful. We can mix all of these different types and then run manipulations on them simultaneously. So if I wanted to filter by date, it would be really easy to do, or filter by string, which we'll do in uh, an example in a second. Okay, so uh, how do I actually work with the data inside uh, one of these? So uh, this is pretty straightforward to do. Um, let's say I just wanted to make a plot of the date versus is uh, my calories. So this is uh, very straightforward. And if I uh, make kind of a standard figure and then I plot, and for my x variable, what I do is I select the table and then I use a dot operator and then I say the date. And this will actually generate a uh, vector of all of the date entries. So if I evaluate it, you see that the answer is showing up as a 9 by 1 date time array. Likewise, data.calories is stored in answer, and uh, you see that it's actually an array of doubles. So if I use the table name followed by a dot and then the variable name, I can just pull different vectors straight out of the construct and work with them directly. Going back to my figure, uh, you can see here that I use this to make a plot of the date versus the number of calories actually uh, uh, consumed on that day. Alternatively, um, if you want to do something a little more traditional and plot uh, a, a uh, x and y axis not given by dates, here we make uh, calories versus exercise minutes. I thought this would be kind of an interesting thing to plot because you might think, well, 
I'm going to eat more calories on days that I exercise more, but actually it looks like it's the opposite. The less uh, uh, I exercise on a day, the more calories uh, you might consume. Uh, well, it's made up data, so I don't really expect to find a lot of interesting stuff there, but I did think about it a little bit when I was making it up. Um, okay, so let's see. What if you wanted to add some information to a table? The easiest way to do this, although you can add row by row, the easiest way is actually just to put two tables together. So I'm going to build a new table from scratch. And it would look something like this. I'm going to make a new table object. And then I'm going to populate variables one at a time. So I enter the date as an array of dates. I'm going to enter weights as an array of weights going to enter walking minutes as an array of walking minutes, calories as an array of calories, and feeling as uh, an array, uh, as a cell array of strings. And if I execute this, we see I've created a new table. It's got the same dimensionalities as the original table. And then I can actually use string concatenation to put them together. So here's an example of that. Sorry, that line shouldn't be there quite yet. So here, I'm going to take data, and I'm going to set it equal to the original array, and then create a new line, and concatenate on the, uh, new, uh, uh, the new data table. And if you do this, you'll see that data, the data table, now has the additional March 10th and March 11th dates added to the bottom of it. What if you wanted to get rid of them? So that was how you add data. If you want to get rid of data, we can use the standard MATLAB syntax for uh, uh, deleting entries from an array. So here I want to erase the two rows we just added, which were rows 10 and 11. And to do that, we set them equal to an empty array. And if I look at data again, you can see March 10th and March 11th have now been removed. Now, one of the great things about tables is that you're able to filter the data as you go. So uh, a nice example of this would be if I wanted to split up the data depending on whether that was a date that you were feeling good on or not so good. So uh, as an example, let's say I was going to make a plot only of the days where uh, the result was uh, feeling bad. So you can accomplish this by using logical indexing. So in particular, we're going to uh, create, basically create a new array uh, or a new table. And that table will be only ones where strcmp, that stands for string compare, of the data dot feeling entry are equal to bad. So only we're going to only select the rows of the table where feeling was bad. And Having done that, this creates a new pseudo table in memory, and then we're going to select the date column of that. So these will be all of the dates where feeling was bad. And then we're going to select all of the calories where feeling was bad, and we'll plot them with a red X. So if I do that, we see that uh, we have a selection of dates uh, with all of our bad uh, uh, calorie days. So what would be kind of interesting for this case is what if we compare that to the good calorie days? So again, using logical indexing, this time I'm selecting uh, the days where the feeling is not bad, so not strcmp, but we're going to plot it with uh, a different symbol. And we're going to add a legend. Uh, with bad days and all other days because that's what the order we put it in and just to make things a little prettier We'll throw in uh, an adjustment to font size and if I Evaluate this selection Now we get kind of an interesting pattern. We see that the calories were actually higher on days that were bad days than on on all other days 
So I kind of wish this was real data because uh, this would be the sort of pattern that would be really interesting to see. You, I guess the person who you're studying here is some kind of emotional eater or something. Maybe they go in for ice cream on those days. Alas, this is fake data. I filled in all of the feeling columns uh, and the weight columns actually completely arbitrarily. So um, manufactured patterns. Anyway, uh, this is the type of filtering you can do very easily with tables, and it really makes things quite a bit easier to work with. So last, I want to talk a little bit about how you get data out of tables, because it can sometimes feel like uh, they're very convenient to work with, but you, if you want to work with them in another program or something like this, uh, it can be a little difficult to get the data out. Um, so let's say I want the dates out. I can actually do that fairly straightforwardly by uh, just grabbing that column, and you'll see that the output, my dates, is an array 9 by one of date time objects. So that's good. We've, we've just popped out the dates. Um, likewise, if I want the diary feelings, the exact same thing, I can just grab the feelings object, it's a 9 by one cell array uh, immediately available. For the rest of the data, remember that the uh, table had five columns. The first one was date time, the two, three, and four were uh, numeric, and five was a string, so we just grabbed one and five. So for two, three, and four, I can create a temporary holding location. So normally I would do this and the next step in one line, but let's split them up. So I created a temporary table with just those three entries. And now, if I want to convert those from the table directly into a data array, I can use the ar table to array command on temp table. And that results in a new object, raw data, which is a, uh, a double array with dimensions three by nine, or sorry, nine by three. So in this way, we've just extracted all of our data into arrays of different uh, types and appropriate dimensions. You can see though, I've lost my labels uh, in doing so. So actually, to be honest, tables are a really convenient way to work with the data. Usually you don't want to pull the data out of the array unless, or sorry, out of the table unless you absolutely have to. The table is a really convenient place to work for it. In general, MATLAB code is fastest when you are running it using MATLAB routines, and the table routines are quite optimized. I many times have written something where I manually did an operation on the table, like joining two tables together based on a specific column, and found out my code was 10 times faster as soon as I switched to using one of MATLAB's built-in routines instead. This is just a general rule in MATLAB. Make MATLAB do the work. It is not only faster for you, it's faster for CPU time as well. Anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed this basic tutorial on tables. I uh, will be putting out more of these tutorials over time as I find topics people find interesting. And uh, if you found this tutorial helpful, please uh, consider giving it a like, and if you want to see more of these tutorials, feel free to subscribe. Um, and if you have criticism, constructive or otherwise, please feel free to put it in the comments section below. And I will see you next time.